Greetings, hello and welcome back to some more class guides for Longo of the Chosen. And today we're gonna take a look at the sharpshooter and I expect this guide to be pretty much straightforward and a little bit less controversial. Although we'll have a little bit of something thrown in, in the middle there. Um, anyway, let's start right off with probably your most common and uh, solid sharpshooter build that you'll have in your barracks, which is the death from above, come on, stay there, DFA sharpshooter. So, um, it obviously, so the Lance Corporal perk basically um, determines what your build is, is going to be focused about and uh, the namesake here, Death From Above, um, kind of is the most important perk. So what does a DFA sharpshooter do? Well, the job of a DFA sharpshooter is pretty much get one kill every single turn, at least. Um, once you get into double tap, you can uh, turn that number into two, but yes. So um, they'll generally be sitting somewhere on the high ground, taking a shot each turn, getting a kill, and the bonus action from death from above is then usually used in order to steady weapon with the stock that you have on your weapon, and uh, get a big aim and crit bonus for the next shot on the following turn. So uh, everything here, all the perk choices are a little bit focused around um, making sure that you get that kill each turn and um, making sure that you hit these shots. So that's that's really all what it is about. Um, so yeah, so death from above is then the, your first choice, your perk, your, your, your build defining choice. Um, on the corporal level, I generally uh, would advise going center mass just because um, it ad increases your base damage, it increases your crit damage, uh, and it helps you secure that one kill per turn. That's really much all what this class is about. There is a valid option with uh, Demgood Ground. I usually would say if you have a slightly lower aim sharpshooter, um, let's say one of the rookies from Gatecrasher um, has like 62 base aim and rolls sharpshooter class then giving them a little bit extra aim with them good ground is a good option um, but in general you should have enough aim from being on the high ground from your PCS from a good scope on your weapon potentially from having a steadied weapon all of these factors uh, and just generally sharpshooters having a very high aim growth um, so they get a lot of aim of levels, you know, sitting here at 96 at Master Sergeant. You don't need the extra aim from them good ground, unless of course your starting stats are kind of low. So in general, um, if you're looking at, at your uh, rookie roster after Gate Crasher, anything above 70 I think is sharpshooter territory. Doesn't mean everybody who's above 70 gets to be a sharpshooter, but if you want to build a DFA sharpshooter, pick that guy with 75 aim or 73 or something. Um, that enables you to pick the damage perks instead of the aim perks. Uh, which is the same then for the next row. We have precision shot, giving you increased crit chance and increased critical damage. Um, on a shot, it's a cooldown ability, um, but it is very solid and it can really, again, help you to, to get that one kill per turn on any big important enemy. It loses a little bit of value when you're fighting against the Chosen, because unless you have some exceptional circumstances, you will not be able to crit the Chosen. Um, but it, it just helps against all other kinds of enemies and with the right setup you will even be able to crit uh, enemies where you don't get a flanking bonus on, like a berserker, like even a sector pod, etc. Um, consider that you will always have with an elite stock 25% base crit chance. Then I think the sniper rifle also has 10% crit chance. So with precision shot giving you 34%, you are high up there. You are uh, at some, at maybe an officer of get some or a holo targeter with crit chance increase in there. And you can actually get these 100% crits with precision shot. 
Now, there is an aim perk here with Lone Wolf, which can make up again for a little bit missing aim, but I think adding any positional requirement to Sharpshooter is a little bit tricky because, well, you can't move and shoot. In most situations, you will be the Lone Wolf because your Sharpshooter is usually a little bit behind the squad. Um, but I think you're giving up too much by not taking precision shot. That's why I don't even give Lone Wolf the blue checkbox here. All right, moving on to the Staff Sergeant rank. Um, for me, this is a bit of a non-power choice, I want to say. I usually go with uh, low profile for those rare situations where you're actually close enough to an enemy. Um, you are, as the death from above sharpshooter, usually on high ground, and high ground, especially in like city center and slums maps, is often just low cover. So having low profile, turning into full cover, makes you a little bit less of a target. Keep in mind sharpshooters are squishy, um, they don't get much health with, with level ups, and you probably uh, don't have a big uh, armor on them. So um, at least giving them low profile might prevent a one shot every now and then. Alternative choice is long watch, which allows for some interesting things with an overwatch ambush on an act unactivated pot. Um, the thing is though, if you don't have um, cool under pressure, that means your overwatch shots cannot crit, and I think you're wasting a lot of damage potential then that way. Also, you don't have control over over it all that much. So there is something like on an um, HQ assault, you could set up a long watch while your shinobi sees an enemy group and and kind of the soon uh, as soon as they move, you activate them that way on their turn uh, in a safe manner. But suddenly another pot shows up somewhere else first. They move first, and then your sna sharpshooter shoots on that one. It's a little bit risky you don't have the full control and that's why i tend to not like um long watch if you have cool under pressure on your uh, ability row here or any other overwatch related perks uh, i'm not sure if kill zone is still an option um that might be an interesting choice although that so there, there are some some situations where i would pick long watch depending on which xcom row perks i get all right, moving on. Um, I actually think I, for I forgot a blue box here. Um, so Dead Eye is the first pick. It's um, it's much better than Dead Eye was in Vanilla um, XCOM 2. So you have a higher damage bonus and a, and a smaller aim penalty um, than in Vanilla. So it is actually a really really high damaging shot. It's exceptionally good against the Chosen. Um, against someone like the assassin where you only get a limited number of attacks in each turn before the damage reduction goes high you want those attacks to be as strong as possible and dead, a dead eye from a sharpshooter is one of your strongest options there definitely um, there is an alternative option here with aggression um, which especially in in the olden days in long war 2 this would be your first pick because of the way Kubikiri worked, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, but I feel like I, I haven't really even put a blue box here. I think it's still kind of viable, but this is an additional ability, an additional cooldown. And I kind of value that so much that I hadn't even thought about aggression. It's like, um, maybe put a honorary, honorary blue box around this in your mind. Um, again, there could be something down here where you say, hey, I get some special effects some crits, so maybe you value aggression more. Um, so that's always a little bit to keep in mind if you are also looking at the XCOM row, how it could influence your perk choices. Moving on. Um, Disabling shot. So in Long War 2, this used to be an ability called Kubikiri, uh, which was also a cooldown based shot. And if you crit the enemy and the enemy had previously taken damage, you would one shot kill them. So a lot of the um, job of the 
sharpshooter of the DFA sharpshooter was um, to execute sector ports, gatekeepers, etc. with a Kubikiri shot. Um, it was deemed a little bit overpowered, just a, just a tiny little bit, because it kind of, um, I don't want to say trivialized, but made some of the late game enemies uh, a lot easier if you could just remove them from the game that way. Of course, you needed to get that 100% crit chance. That being said, disabling shot is probably, I don't want to say just as strong, but it's a very, very strong perk and you can use it against any enemy, you don't need anyone else to do damage first. Um, so if you hit them, they lose their actions the next turn, if your shot crits, they lose their actions for two turns and you can do whatever you want with them. Um, very strong choice. Again, there is some, some value then um, if you really want to basically make sure you're disabling shot for two turns to maybe pick up aggression. Again, you're losing a lot of damage by not picking that either. Um, what do you man mention on the gunnery sergeant role for Hunter's Instincts? So um, I did run a campaign in back in Long War 2 where I had a no Kubikiri campaign, so nobody took Kubikiri. So all my sharpshooters ended, ended up picking Hunter's Instincts. And it is some nice base damage increase. You will often be shooting on flanked enemies, so it's it's noticeable. In your day-to-day -day campaign, I would probably never pick it though. So, because this Abling Shot has just so much utility. Um, and it's so it's, it's fairly necessary um, against late game missions. Let's say something like an Avenger defense, where you might be running into multiple sector pods at the same time, or into a sector pod and a gatekeeper. Just being able to disable one of them while you take care of the other is really strong. Which is probably when you see disabling shot in the XCOM row for any other class, consider if it makes sense picking this up. This is a huge ability giving you lots, lots of control. Master Sergeant, um, a lot of blue over on this row. Generally, I think uh, Double Tap is the biggest um, winner here, allowing you to take two shots every other turn. Um, you need to be a little bit careful with um, actually getting your death from above action, so the second shot needs to be a killing shot. The problem is on the second shot, you no longer get the aim and crit bonus from your steady weapon. So that takes some practice, that takes some target selection to get it right, so you get the second shot in uh, with the right killing power. One alternative here is AMF of Mike's Fox Foxtrot for additional points of base damage, which also translate to two additional points of crit damage. So um, if you're really critting a lot, then um, this really increases your damage and increases that main roll of one shot, one kill per turn, and that enables it much more. I think it's still a valid choice. Um, I get a little bit more value out of double tap, but I like AMF. I usually, in most campaigns, end up having one sharpshooter with AMF. Um, just for the, the additional killing power, and it also combines once again, there's a lot of XCOM row perks which allow this to, to shine. So I had a sharpshooter with rapid fire. If you can take two shots, then two shots with plus four damage seems, seems, seems very strong, right? With rapid fire. And um, I'm not even sure if you could rapid fire from the second shot of double tap. Maybe I should have tried that. Uh, anyway, uh, third choice here, serial. It's, um, I mean, Cyril is still fairly strong in being able to, to take down a bunch of targets in a turn. The reason why I usually don't take it is that I think I find myself very rarely in a situation where I need that. Um, again, for me, the sniper role is the big enemy target remover. So you have one big bad enemy. Um, you kill it, you move on. Um, serial requires you to have a lot of low health targets that are actually in a good position that you can hit them, hit them all, right? Because you will not have your steady aim bonus on the second, third, 
fourth shot, etc. So um, you also get reduced crit chance, I think it is, with each successive shot. So your base damage needs to be enough to kill all those additional targets. Um, more often than not, if I'm in a situation where I need to clean up a bunch of enemies, that's more often, yeah, that, that's usually then the job for a shinobi with Reaper coming in, or maybe with any sort of AoE attack, like a proper saturation fire over those guys, trench gun them down, the lands with your psyops, etc. So, um, I don't usually use the sniper as a cleanup tool, because for, for me, again, Getting the kill, getting the steady for the next turn, that's kind of the part of the preparation here. Not just killing something this turn, but making sure next turn you also have an option. Which is why I generally am not a huge fan of Syria. Um, although I have to say, part of the reason might also be I just don't pick it all that often, so I don't have recent experience with it. So take my opinion on Syria with a big grain of salt. Finally, for the DFA sharpshooter, well, they do not make a good officer. They are usually uh, in a position away from the squad, um, so they can't really command anyone, can't really give anyone else their, their bonuses. Um, and yeah, they, they want to be the one taking the shots, not commanding someone else. Like if a, DFA sharpshooter commands, that means, first of all, you didn't take a shot, you didn't get any big damage in, second of all, you're not gonna have a studied weapon for the following turn. So, no, it's it's not a good choice, I think, for, um, for an officer. Alright, let's have a quick look <clears throat> at um, PCS gear and all that stuff. Death Perception PCS, I think, is the best choice for Sharpshooter. They should be on the high ground, so they get 5 aim from that, um, and it reduces enemy dodge. Uh, this used to be incredibly strong back in Long War 2, where negative dodge... Um, well, negative dodge basically translates to crit chance. This used to be able to actually reduce enemy dodge into the negative, and in the current version, F fairly certain it only reduces it to zero, like it can't reduce it below zero. Um, still, it's just a matter of solid solid choice. You could also go just with a blank perception PCS, um, but there's probably a lot of competition around those, so being able to get some value out of death perception is preferred. Loadout. I personally think Sharpshooters, DVA sharpshooters, should have some sort of suit with a grappling hook. Um, because it really helps them to catch up with the rest of the squad and to get into a good position. Um, one approach I always use when moving through the map is um, staying actually on the low ground with a steadied weapon. Um, and then while you have your grapple off cooldown, that's important. And then basically once an encounter starts, when f once a fight starts, I take my grappling uh, hook and I check, okay, which high ground can I get to? So I'm basically, in a way, my soldier is standing on 20 different positions at the same time. Because those are all the grappling spots they can get to. Where can I get a flank on the enemy? Where can I get line of sight on the most enemies? The interesting thing that hopefully nobody fixes is grappling to a new position does not break your steady weapon from your weapon so um, you steady on the low ground you grapple to the high ground you still get 25 aim and crit to your steady shot and suddenly now you're also because of the grapple in a flanking position and can get an easy kill um, this for me kind of also makes makes sharpshooters a strong contender even on guerrilla operations. A lot of people say, oh, sharpshooters are only good on, on untimed missions, supply raids, HQ assaults, etc. Completely disagree. Like uh, every guerrilla op, smash and grab, whatever, sharpshooter is a stable um, damage dealer, one kill per turn, and can ca catch up with the squad, has the mobility to, to stay there. And yeah, just. Uh, I like sharpshooters. Did I mention that? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, weapon. So we've got a 
well, of course. Your weapon you use a sniper rifle. Oh, fantastic. No, uh, weapon upgrades. Um, fairly straightforward, uh, straightforward. You want your stock for the uh, aim and crit when you steady it. Um, you want probably an autoloader uh, to be able to always shoot so you don't have to waste actions on reloading. Um, in extended mech it can work, I just think autoloader is much more reliable to make sure you don't have at some point a reloading turn. Um, then again, if you have an um, elite extended mech, so you have six shots in your sniper rifle, it's very rare that you're going to be in constant combat seven turns in a row. Still, autoloader is my preferred choice. Now, um, top side attachment is either going to be a scope or a laser sight. Um, it's, it's a bit of a personal preference. Again, if you build more like a crit oriented, maybe you'd pick up aggression, pick up and need laser sight and get those 100% crits on the disabling shot. Um, for me, I really want to make sure that I can even snipe someone in full cover. So that's why I prefer the scope, but I think both are viable options. Um, any other loadout choices? So uh, occasionally you will be holo targeting something, so pick up maybe an upgrade holo targeter later on, like kind of the hand me downs. So again, this is a tier two at Master Sergeant. It's like I wouldn't go out of my way to upgrade them, but if you have some spare cash, sure, get an upgraded holo targeter. Um, rest of this stuff. Of course, you'll be running with plating for some ablative HP. You'll be running with some sort of ammo type. Talon works again for some more crit. Um, you could take any sort of damaging rounds, blue screens, dragon, viper rounds all work. Although dragon and viper, you want to get kills, right? And dragon and viper kind of part of their damage is the, the dot effect over time. So you're not getting much value out of that, so um, you could also be running with something like what's Flechette and all the other ammo types that just give a flat damage boost plus an additional damage to certain enemy types. And then, um, depending on mission, you either run a vest or you could run something like a smoke grenade, a med kit. You usually should be able to keep your snipers out of trouble, so your vest is not necessarily um, not necessarily necessary, uh, required, but um, it can be. So here I think I'm basically setting up for Waterworld, so um, you won't be able to completely stay out of trouble there, so that's why I'm backing up a vest. And yeah, that's, um, that's the sharpshooter, the DFA sharpshooter. Let's move on to the holo targeting one. Right, so moving on with the hollow sharpshooter, and this is not rocket science here. Um, so y when I say build a hollow target sharpshooter, everybody would probably be able to just say, oh yeah, hollow targeting, that's all related. Most of it is related to hollow targeting. Just pick center row, done. End of the class guide. Um, so hollow targeting sharpshooter is very, very much a support role. You will be taking very few shots yourself and you're going to be enabling the rest of your squad to do more damage and more reliable damage. Um, so for that, of course, again, perk, the, the, the build defining perk here at Lance Corporal is then rapid targeting. Um, where I'd, I'd even say that the important part of rapid targeting is not the instant targeting that you get from this, but rather that holo targeting no longer ends your turn, so you can target two enemies per turn. Um, Phantom is really my choice here on Corporal because, well, you kind of don't take shots yourself, so you don't need don't need damn good ground and you don't need center mass. It also allows you to a certain extent to scout a little bit. Keep in mind though that you do not have any sort of detection radius reduction. So you don't have Covert, you don't have Ghost Walker, and you don't can't carry an SMG to reduce your detection range. So um, it requires some some very careful scouting, but it also keeps your Holobot, and I'd even say Holobot Officer here, um, keeps them safe. 
You might, you might already see that officer rating of 500, uh, 5 out of 5 in the top right. So yeah, this um, yeah, just, you just uh, address this. If you build a holo targeting sharpshooter, make them an officer. This is it just synergizes so well, and you can basically then holo target an enemy and then still use your command to give other shots at this guy. Um, and there's some other effects on the officer abilities that just really, really pair well with uh, being a, a sharpshooter. All right, um, hide a follow. Higher crit chance on enemies that you auto target. Seems like a good choice. Independent tracking. Um, enemies stay holo target for an additional turn. Most common use case is you spot an enemy group, but you don't want to engage this turn, you want to engage next turn. Start holo targeting them. Paint, paint them already this turn, um, then you can have up to five enemies holo targeted by the time you engage with like two holo targets that you can do per turn plus rapid targeting. Uh, VPT, Vital Point Targeting. Additional enemies, um, additional enemies, additional damage against enemies you holo targeted. Really strong. Really strong. Like this at this point. So um, up until this point, it still feels like you're carrying your holo targeter through the missions. Once you unlock VPT, which fair enough, it comes fairly late, a tech sergeant. But suddenly you see a big increase in the effectiveness of your squad if they have a hollow officer with them. And um, then the final holo targeting perk, multi-targeting, it's a big AOE targeting, um, so you can easily set holo targets on everyone in a group of eight. And thankfully, due to rapid targeting, um, it just costs a single action. You can do something else with your second action. Like, holo target more enemies, or use get some to make even give everybody even more crit. Um, finally, Master Sergeant. Well, there's no holo targeting perk here. Um, you can pick whatever you want. I went here in this case with AMF. Basically, my reasoning being, if there's that rare instance where I'm actually going to be taking a shot, I want that shot to count. Like, I don't have um, any sort of abilities that kind of particularly shine for double tap, although double tap is also a valid choice. Um, serial, to some extent. Um, I could see situations where you might just... Um, might be uh, AOE targeting a group and then cleaning the upper serial. So uh, generally a good approach. Again, um, finally officer rating 5 out of 5. You are not uh, attacking, you have abilities that don't end your turn. You use the rest of stuff for your officer officer stuff. And so, just remove this and this. Okay. Um, which um, so there's an officer perk, and you will feel like an idiot for not taking it, like me in this case, with this specific officer. Lead by example. You give uh, people in your squad a bonus to their aim, based on the difference between your aim and their aim. So if you have a sharpshooter with 107 aim, um, other soldiers in your squad, like even a, a ranger that has 90 aim, which is fairly high, will still get half the difference, so 8.5 rounded probably to 9, 9 additional aim, that's, that's huge, um, on top of whatever you give with holo targeting. Again, so this this is me making a mistake and not picking lead by example, lead by example should be your pick for every holo targeting sharpshooter, unless of course um, there are situations, let's say gate crasher 55 aim rookie randomly gets promoted to sharpshooter. You can make them a holo targeter um, because they, they're not going to hit the broad sword of, of the barn, right? So you make them a holo targeter, you make them an officer, they probably don't have the aim for lead by example, then take collector. So um, it, it still works. Like holo targeting um, skill tree works even if you have. Um, crappy aim yourself. 
but it can really shine if you have a high aim soldier anyway to to then pick up lead by example and help your squad even more um loadout wise the best possible hollow targeter anything else just like the death from above sharpshooter um you might not necessarily need a grappling suit although it really helps to make sure again you're running around on the low ground you can grapple to multiple high ground spots you're effectively in 20 places at once and you really want to make sure you have line of sight to all the enemies you want to hollow target so yeah and since you're not going to be taking shots i don't think i'm um, bringing ammo is necessary so i often bring like a spam med kit here to make sure i can um stabilize that one soldier that overextended and is bleeding out uh, what else pcs is going to be in this case the perception pcs because well assuming you pick the right officer ability um, you want as much of that aim to bleed over to the rest of your squad. So yeah, um, that brings me um, to the first time, uh, let me just go into soldier abilities, um, where one of the rules will kick in that I brought up in the very first, in the introduction video to the series, where I said, I'm not going to try to make a guide for a spec that I have absolutely no experience with um, or that I think is not not good. So there's not going to be any any discussion of snapshot, a snapshot sharpshooter here because um, I don't play with them. I did a sharpshooter only run where I was kind of forced to play with them because you need someone who's able to, to move and shoot, but I I don't think this is a valid choice. Like let's, let's just put it bluntly this way. Um, so you promote someone to a sharpshooter, so they have this unique squad side perk that nobody else has, and then you spend your first perk point so they can do what everybody else can do, as in move and shoot. That seems like a waste. Like just just use a gunner instead in the first place. They can move and shoot without having to spend a perk point. Um, you also get huge aim penalties if you want to move and shoot on anything that's actually not within your sight range. So again, if I want to move and shoot at somebody that's within my direct sight range, not spot sight, use a gunner, use a ranger, use a shooty shinobi, whatever. I just don't see the appeal of snapshot sharpshooters. Um, they don't fill a niche that I think is is there. Like this is this is a, a job that is better performed by actual shooting classes, like actual other direct shooting classes. Have your sharpshooters be hollows, or mostly death from above? You're gonna have much more success with that. All right. Um, after this little rant. Let's take a look at the XCOM row, and uh, as usual, we're gonna do that from the UFOpedia page. Right, um, let's look at the XCOM row perks, and there are a lot of good perks, a lot of um, obviously useless perks, just a few trap perks, and and some uh, automatic pickups for me. So where do we start? Um, let's let's look at the tier four perks. Um, and now I'm gonna go through the complete list. Um, Apex Predator. I haven't really gotten much value out of it yet, but I also don't. I always get excited when I see it. It's a it's a weird choice. So um, when you crit with your primary weapon, there's a chance to panic uh, um, the target and nearby enemies. Well. As we've established with the Death from Above Sharpshooter, you should be killing things, so panic the target doesn't matter. Um, nearby enemies is enemies with four tiles. Unfortunately, I don't know what the math on this is. So there's no information like what is the chance to panic? Does it scale based on the damage you do, the hit chance you had, the face of the moon, or whatever? What's what's the? How does it actually work? So that makes it a little bit hard to quantify. That being said, you should be critting fairly often with your sharpshooter, so there's a chance to trigger this um, a lot. And panicked enemies is a really good thing to have. 
like the dream scenario is you have a group of eight advent uh, you're in concealment you take your first shot against um, the, the biggest threat in the group and you panic all the rest I've never seen that happen though <clears throat> um, Avenger is a little bit of a weird one um, where you take one reaction shot with your primary weapon um, if an enemy fires on, on your ally um, so it's like return fire but no, you're not returning you're just shooting for someone else um, it's a reaction shot, so you don't have usually don't have cool under pressure. It might be an enemy that's in full cover. It might be a crappy shot. I'd rather uh, control the use of my ammo, so I kind of want to avoid that. Um, that being said, I've been fighting in a modded campaign against enemies that have Avenger, and it's surprisingly annoying and surprisingly effective on the other side. Um, so there is some value in that. What I'm not sure is uh, about is how it affects your steady weapon status. Let's say you steadied your weapon, um, an enemy shoots at your squad, Avenger triggers, you fire back. Will you still have a steadied weapon in the following turn? I would assume not, and that tells me then I want to avoid this perk, because I want to control my ammo usage, I want to control whether or not I have a steadied weapon for the next turn um, to be to be in that one shot one kill position um, implacable good choice solid choice maybe not necessarily worth um, 40 points so there is um, let me just yeah there's reposition um, which is a little bit more restricted as you need to be shooting at a flanked or exposed target and then you get a move implacable you need to score a kill to get a move but it's much cheaper it's the reposition is 20 this is 40 um, again one of the downsides of the sharpshooter is their their mo mobility and the ability to keep up the squad and this can help a big deal a lethal automatic pick um, again for, for death from above sharpshooters I'm mostly I'm mostly gonna be talking about death from above here like uh, horror targeting you probably don't need any perks whatsoever um, two additional points of damage one additional point of crit damage this helps to ensure that one shot one kill stays true um, rapid fire I mentioned it in conjunction with um, AMF to really get those big hits out there what needs to be said though is a rapid fire and I think also chain shot wherever it is um, only work with direct line of sight. Rapid fire does not work in spot sight range, so it's. I don't want to say it's a trap, but it's not an automatic pickup, uh, especially not for 40 AP here in the in the row. Uh, running gun is fairly strong. Um, it allows you to move, then activate running gun, then take a sniper shot. Um, so it gives you a lot of more flexibility. Again, it's a question of do you have the 40 AP to spare? Depends on the rest of your skill roll. Like, it's not an automatic pickup, but it's a strong choice. Rupture, um, I would say bad choice because, again, you want to be the one getting the kills on the enemies and not the one taking the first shot to rupture them. If you're desperate to have someone with rupture in your squad and you don't have anyone else who can pick it up, then it might be an okay choice. Generally, I would, would avoid it though. Um, looking at the rest, um, weapon handling is awful. You should never be in a situation where you have um, a penalty to your to your hit chance because of range. That's completely avoidable, so I wouldn't pick this up. Uh, untouchable is usually a strong pick, but your sniper should be far enough back that you don't worry about being untouchable. Uh, similarly, for will to survive. It's like you could pick these kind of perks up, all these kind of defensive perks. Like if you're ever in a situation where you're uh, not um, untargeted by the enemy, then this might help you. But I think then it's more a matter of hey, you should you should be playing better to avoid those situations if you can. Um, what else? Again, stuff like. Shredder, I think, hollow targeting if it's on the tree here at all. 
you should be the ones getting the kill shots and not preparing kills for others. So Shredder, similar to Rapture, is not something I would pick up. Um, bit of a trap, Shadow Strike. I concealed 50 bonus and 50 bonus critical hit. I usually get excited when I see Shadow Strike on classes that have a great opener from stealth. The best you can do as a sharpshooter is probably a dead eye shot. And if you're taking the shot from stealth, you probably already have 100, 100 aim, 100 crit chance on that enemy because they are probably out there in the open, flanked. You don't need Shadow Strike. And it's only affecting single target, definitely not worth 20 points. Um, steady hat, anything that gives you more aim and crit um, is a good choice if you have spare points. That includes stuff like steady hands, uh, open fire, predator. Um, Target focus seems like a weaker choice in this regard. I think there's also um, what is the aim assist if you're constantly or often running with a hollow targeter. Although it, again, this aim, this whole additional aim could be wasted because you're sitting at 100 aim with all your shots anyway. So um, make it a little. Don't just pick it up. Play a few missions without it and then say, hey, would this help me? Um, And there's also, well, it's similar, in CDJ, additional aim and crit against enemies that are flashbanked or stunned. Do you really need it? That's the kind of thing. Concentration is a fairly okay pickup. Um, you no longer grace, right? All your graces are full hits, ensuring that you actually get those kills. Then again, how often are you going to be grazing if you really keep your aim high? Um, and have uh, death perception PCS to reduce enemy dodge. So um, that's all that. Special mention here to aim. So you can hunker down, giving you aim and crit chance for the next shot. It's basically just like using your stock, but you hunker down instead. It's super helpful early game when you maybe not have good stocks, but once you have an elite stock that gives 25 aim, 25 crit, it outclasses aim, and at that point those are kind of wasted skill points. Um, it depends, of course, on do you have those additional skill points um, to spare anyway? Do you have enough elite stocks? This might come into play there. Additionally, of course, hunker down also makes you fairly, fairly safe, so you can maybe stay a little bit closer to the squad, maybe even um, within direct on the side of the enemies. Lots of things you can do with aim. And if you have something like aim plus deep cover, you can dash up, automatically hunker down and then have a steadied 20 aim, 20 crit shot um, on the following turn. That makes it actually a fairly nice combo. Keep in mind, you can have two tier 1, two tier 2, and two tier 3 perks at the same time. Um, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much the most perks I want to I wanna call out here. Again, a lot of things um, depend a little bit on your playstyle and how it's going to gonna be for you. Things like lightning reflexes is a strong perk, but is your sharpshooter actually going to be the one running the overwatches to prevent lightning reflexes um, to prevent, yeah, the overwatches from actually hitting somebody and triggering them with lightning reflexes? Probably not. So, not a good choice here, I'd say. Um, And a lot of it will also depend then on how many perk points do you have to spare. Like defensive perks like Formidable or like the defensive perks further below might seem useless for someone who's in the back. Then again, if you have spare points and no good offensive perks, yeah, pick up that stuff. Like um, you might be in a situation where you can't avoid that enemy or where you have a lost beating on you, getting some additional ablative. Uh, reduced explosive damage, etc., might be helpful. 
all right um so that's it for the sharpshooter here we have uh, only a few classes left and i think the next one is gonna be the shinobi and then i think it's only the assault missing well and the cyanic and the spark and the hero classes okay we have a few more classes left to go all right um for now though thanks for watching i'll see you next time